Well, yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Carl, um, and I'll share a little bit about Grace Church uh, Rawton. But as Brian said, I'm really, really grateful that you guys have been praying for us. Um, but there's probably a few of you here are not quite sure who you're praying for or what you're praying for. Um, so Lord willing, I will shed a bit of light on that uh, this morning. And our heart is we'd prayerfully gospel a church into existence uh, in Rawton. Why Grace Church? Well, the driving verses behind it are Ephesians 2, verses 8 to 10. So it's by grace we've been saved, not by works, so that no one can boast through faith. So, And we've been given these good works uh, to walk in. And we know from Ephesians that God's plan to reach the world is through the local church. It's through us, um, his people. Um, so that's why Grace Church. So there's, there's us. Um, on the slide there. So that's me on the right, in case you couldn't guess. And then there's Sarah, our eldest daughter at the bottom there, Lyra, and Sophie, our youngest daughter. Sarah and I actually met uh, working in Swindon around about the year 2000 for a company called Lounge Lambert in the town centre. 2003, uh, we moved to London. Um, and when we left, we weren't Christian, but we've come back Christian. So we were baptised together in June 2015, and we moved home uh, to Rawton. Um, with our heart for our, our family, our friends, our community. Um, and praise the Lord, I was able to leave my insurance work in October last year to concentrate full-time on planting this church. And then Sarah, my wife, she works part-time for uh, a couple of Christian ministries as well. So that's, that's us. Here's the vision. And it is, by God's grace, we'll prayerfully create new gospel access in Rawton, Swindon, and beyond through planting biblically faithful reproducing churches. Um, so this is a vision, in a sense, that will, that will never end until the Lord Jesus returns. So we're, we're praying for a vision beyond the one church in Rawton. And what we want to be able to do is create new gospel access. Um, so we want to be able to partner with all the good, faithful, existing works like here, across Swindon, across this county, um, but what we want to be able to do is create new works that will be able to reach more people. And the thing about new gospel access, who gives gospel access? Well, that's us. It's me, it's you. Like We are the access uh, to the gospel. Um, so what we want to be able to do is meet maybe at a slightly different time uh, to when other churches are meeting. So if uh, people can't come in a morning for whatever reason. They might be able to make uh, church in the afternoon. And we'll think about ministries that maybe look a little bit different and at a different time uh, to what's going on so that we can work in partnership um, with good works. And our prayer is that as, as that happens, as new gospel access is created, then that, as people are disciple, that will grow into uh, more churches. Why? Well, I'm sure you're all aware of this. In Rawton, there's about 10,000 people. There's probably in excess of 9,700 people, maybe more, uh, that do not know the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And across Swindon, there's probably in excess of 200,000 people that do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And Swindon is the third fastest growing town in the UK at the moment, and it's expected to grow by 20% in the next 15 years. And if there's no kingdom advance, then that means there'll be over 250,000 people uh, lost and without a hope. And I know that as believers, well, that breaks our hearts. Um, so that's why we want to, to Lord will implant churches. I won't go too much into this because you guys will know Rawton uh, pretty well, but just in terms of growth, when we moved here, there was 99 streets. Uh, there's now 106. Um, and then Swindon, I'm sure you're aware, in Wichelstow at the moment, there's 4,000 new homes being built. And then on the east of Swindon, there's the largest new built housing estate in Europe being built, which is going to consist of 8,000 homes. Um, so our prayer is we'd be able to spread the gospel uh, through those communities. Um, so if that was the, the vision and the need, values, these are the things that we'll do because we think they're the most important. And our values should get us uh, towards our vision. So values are really the things that we treasure. So for the, the church, Lord willing, if we're given the growth, the things we'll look to treasure are Jesus, the Bible, community, mission, and multiplication. 
Um, so Jesus, so we want to treasure Jesus and we want to make as much of, as we can of him in all situations. Um, so when it comes to discipleship, a disciple is somebody who's learning Jesus, who keeps learning Jesus, who wants to know more about him. And then somebody who makes disciples is somebody that's going to help others just know more about Jesus. Keep learning more. Keep knowing more. Um, so Jesus is the heart of discipleship as we help one another learn him. But we want to be passionate about him. We want to treasure him. And we want him to be our, our greatest joy. Um, in order to learn Jesus, our second value is we treasure the Bible. So the Bible is the place where we're going to learn uh, Jesus. So we want to be committed to preaching and teaching through the Bible. We want to call people to submission to what the Bible has to say. We want to try and live it out. We want to teach it to our children. And we want to make sense of the world through the Bible. That's the lens through which we need to look. Thirdly, um, is community. So as a, a church plant that's just getting going, we don't have a building. Uh, we don't have anywhere to meet apart from in our, in our home. Um, so we're praying that we'll be able to create gospel communities that will meet during the week. And then as we get growth, Lord willing, we'd be able to gather them into a Sunday gathering where we all meet together uh, to be taught. But these gospel communities will be at the heart of what we um, want to do. So we're, we're not trying to create too many structures where people have to come to. We want to say to the believers, you're the access to the gospel. You go get plugged into the structures that exist in this community already, whatever that is. If it's the PTA, if it's a football team, if it's netball, um, if it's chess, whatever it is, you go do the things that you're passionate about and go be the hands and feet of Jesus there. And then during the week, we'll gather in homes We'll grow together under the Bible's teaching. We want to be a place where we're sharing the truth in love. We want to be a community that's forgiving. We want to be a community that's invitational. And then we want to go out together as gospel communities so that we move out on mission into our community together, um, which leads us into to mission. So gospel communities don't just meet for the sake of one another, but they meet for the sake of the community around them. So we want to love Rawton, whatever community it is that we're in. We want to listen to the people around us. We want to know their stories. We want to equip folks um, for mission. We want to make sure we're praying for it. We want to make sure we're living out the gospel in all the places that God has sovereignly put us. We want to make sure we're showing off the beauty of the gospel by helping people in need. And then we want to structure our ministries so that we're encouraging every member to have a love for and a heart for the world for the sake of the lost. And then finally, multiplication. So God's plan from the start of the Bible was multiplication, and it's a beautiful plan. So we want to encourage people to partner with us. We want to partner with other ministries, other churches um, in this task. We want to lay aside our comfort for those who don't know Jesus we want to call people into the Great Commission to multiply themselves. And we want to call gospel communities in response to the Great Commission to multiply gospel communities. And then as we pray that the gospel would spread, we pray that then churches uh, would be planting. So every Christian is a part of church planting, which is a beautiful thing. Um, so here's a little update as to, as to where we are. So we've, in God's kindness, been given 160 plus prayer partners so every single street in Rawton has somebody praying for it they've adopted a street and they're praying and we are greedy for prayer um, so if you'd like to adopt a street and get praying for it like please do come and come and speak with me um, as I said I've been able to leave work and, and supported now for for three years um, we've got two full-time missionaries coming to join us um, they, they arrive next week, uh, June the 12th, uh, so please pray for them. Jay and Jason, two young men from uh, Florida. Um, we've got a few partner churches um, that are supporting us. Um, we've had and will continue to have mission teams come through this year. So we've now knocked on um, over 1,500 doors in the town um, through the course of this year. And by the end of the year, we'll have knocked on every single door um, in Rawton. 
Um, we've been sharing these plans with Brian and Paul, uh, with Spencer at um, Emmanuel Chippenham, with Charlie Fadipe and Khan, and with Ruben um, in, at Emmanuel Marlborough. And, and these guys have been just such a godsend uh, to me, uh, just advising, praying for us, looking out for us, uh, just asking the right questions. Um, we praise the Lord. Two local pastors have agreed to become trustees of the initial church plant, and we're, uh, we're going through the process with the FIEC at the moment of becoming an FIEC um, recognized church plant. And then one of the local churches in Ralton has agreed to give us their building for a Sunday afternoon as well. So we're praying we'll be able to start some prayer meetings um, pretty soon. Um, so how can you partner with us? Well, please just keep praying for us. That's the thing uh, that we really treasure and value the most. So pray for Rawton, pray for our family, uh, pray for Jay and Jason as, as they arrive and get going. Um, we will be starting a Sunday afternoon uh, prayer and vision meeting soon. Um, so if you know anybody locally that might like to, to come and pray with us, um, then, then please let us know. Um, we're planning for our Sunday gatherings to be on a Sunday afternoon as well. So if there's people that are free on a Sunday afternoon and might be able to help kind of swell the numbers a little bit as we get going, um, that would be really appreciated. Um, but if you are hearing this and you're thinking, I'd like to come and pray or I'd like to find out more, please do come and speak to Brian or one of the elders here uh, before you come and speak to us. Um, so thank you, Brian. That's, that's us. <laughs>